Hello everyone. Today I will be discussing my report, The Method of Theology by John McQuarrie. According to Bernard Lonergan, method can be understood as a normative pattern of recurrent and related operations yielding cumulative and progressive results. In his own wide-ranging study, he covers not only the method of theology proper, but the methods of the whole complex of theology studies. Beginning with researches of the biblical scholar as he seeks to establish the text and to place is in its historical setting and ending with the preacher and teacher as they seek to communicate the Christian faith to different types of people. But on the other hand, some of these methods are not peculiar to theology, wherein biblical scholars uses the same methods of textual criticism as the classicist and the historian of doctrine, the same methods as any as any other historian. From the theology view of the theology proper, the kind of exposition of doctrine which we are concerned based on this book, biblical and historical studies constitute a preliminary to the work of theology and provide some of its material. While teaching and preaching are specialized skills which are subsequent to theology and communicate its insights in highly specific situation. The distinctive method of theology lie in the middle of this foot that leads from the, from the establishment of the text to the act of communication in a concrete situation. However, to the core of theological, theological method that we must address our attention. What is theological method? It is in the method of any discipline there are explicitly or implicitly an overriding rationale which coordinates the various avenues if a approach and assigns to each its proper degree of emphasis. Furthermore, the vindication of any particular method can be found only in the kind of theology to which is it conduces if it leads to a coherent and intelligible presentation of what is recognizably the genuine content of the revelation as that has been held in the community of faith, then a theological method vindicates itself. This is simply to say that method and content are inseparable in theology. The rationale underlying the method recognizes and seeks to coordinate three major avenues of approach to the content of theology. First, an important role is assigned in, in this book to description as an element in theological method. This kind of description offered we call phenomenological when you've learned the value of this method from Hazel and his followers in the school of phenomenology. This does not mean that we are going to be bound too closely to any particular technique or phenomenology, but it does not, but it does recognize the valuable contributions that this school of philosophy offers theology, as well as various other disciplines. And but what is phenomenology? It is a careful analytic description or to express the same idea in another way. It is letting to us to see that which shows itself the phenomenon by removing as far as possible concealments, distortions, and whatever else might prevent from seeing the phenomenon as it actually gives itself. This phenomenological procedure would seem to have at least three major advantages. First, it begins at the right place with the phenomena themselves, wherein it requires not to allow presumptions or ideas taken over the history 
of philosophy or theology to dominate our minds to such an extent that we never really face the phenomena but remain content with some ready-made interpretation. It may well be that eventually we shall decide to accept some interpretation that is already available. But we ought to do so only because we see that it really does interpret the phenomena. And we can decide about this only if our, we ourselves be confronted by the phenomena. Secondly, it conduces to clarity. On this matter, it is useful to know that what one is talking about, it is possible to plunge into, into theology and to discourse about man, sin, God, revelation, history, and all the rest without having taken the time and trouble to see that these words mean or how they refer, or in what context of experience they have their home in their home. Thirdly, in proceeding by description rather than by deduction, it moves upon a more secure ground. It means that in any deductive argument, there is at every step the possibility of falling into logical fallacy. A good illustration of this point is afforded by the classical arguments. They were called proofs for God's existence. Interpretation as the second method methodology method methodological strand that calls for mention. Among the formative factors that we have noted in theology, an important place was assigned to revelation. The primordial revelation that we have seen has been mediated through scripture and tradition. And this had come down to, to is from a past in many ways strange to us, to, is, ways is, is strange to us, so that the revelation as it comes to us is a scripture and tradition needs to be continually reinterpreted. There are points in interpretation. Number one, the considerable complexity of the process, which seems always to involve some kind of circular movement. Interpretation would be impossible if expression of life was, were completely strange. The further point about interpretation is that it seems to require ability to, to use two different models of expression. This may be language or something else in parallel. One mode of expression does not supplant, supplant the other and perhaps cannot take its place or express all the other expresses. However, it throws light on the other and brings out its meaning. But in accordance with the circular character of interpretation, this is again a reciprocal process so that each mode of expression throws lights on the other and has light thrown on it by the other. Secondly, interpretation has to have regard to the content of that which is to be interpreted so that illuminating language is an appropriate one and is capable of expressing the kind of matter that has found expression in the language to be interpreted. Thirdly, theological interpretation is its dialect, dialectical character. It means that whatever has been said, something more remains to be said or gained and whatever doctrine, doctrinal formulation has been offered will be susceptible to correction by a new formulation and will indeed demand such correction. And the last methodological strange, I, uh, strand is the application. The theology takes its rise within the life of the community of faith. And it seeks to bring this faith to clear and coherent expression. But then it comes back to life of faith. For theology as a whole may be considered as an interpretation and thus shows the kind of movement that belongs to interpretation. A theology that becomes an end it itself, itself can easily degenerate, degenerate into rare feed or rarefied academic speculation that 
that has lost sight of the existential realities out of which it arose and which it was intended to be in to expression. This is my reference and thank you for listening.